Master Reddit. Subscribe for more videos. What's something your employer did that instantly killed employee morale? One of our senior employees asked for a raise because it had been a few years since he had had one and he was doing a great job. Management reviewed his file, realized they could pay one of the new guys half of the salary of experienced guy, fired senior guy, promoted junior dude. They weren't aware of the warehouse dynamic and soon found out that no one liked or wanted to work for or with junior guy, Morel dropped a lot. A week later, senior guy committed suicide. Once the warehouse was informed slash invited to the funeral, morale reality dropped and eventually junior guy became so ineffective trying to run the shop that he was fired and the next senior guy just kind of took over without management doing anything about it everything began to run as it had before senior guy was fired holy shit something similar happened to a friend's dad he worked at a tech company for years and his work had always been satisfactory one day a new manager comes in and notices that his pay rate is kinda high since he has been there for a while so he requires my friend's dad to go to a performance review course thing the day he completes it he is fired for unsatisfactory performance without even having his results looked at. This kind of happened to me recently. New boss, company with financial problems. Boss decides to eliminate my position. After 22 years with the company. Let go. Just like that. In 22 years I had always gotten good evaluations and never been written up once. Was let go this past Saturday. Now on unemployment for the first time in my life, I'm 45 years old. Ban smartphones in the break room to force us to talk to one another and build camaraderie. Ends up we didn't like each other that much. I had a boss who did something similar, though less coercive. He would pick pairs of people he thought should get to know each other better and strongly suggest that we go out to lunch together. For some reason he matched me with one of our younger and more opinionated engineers, who spent the entire lunch ranting about how all taxation is theft and how our support for Israel was stupid that if the Jews wanted to run around in the desert we should just give them Arizona. It was certainly a learning experience for me, though not in the way my boss was hoping. I stayed as far away from that guy as I could for the rest of his, thankfully brief, employment with his. Sounds like you met a Redditor in real life. No raises or bonuses this year due to company performance, but I will make it up to you by taking the whole company to the lake for a trip on my new 30 feet boat. Business had been running for three years and many of the employees had been there from the beginning without getting a pay rise. After some requests the company announced that there would be a review of everyone's pay. Called in each worker to discuss. Basically they had decided to pay every employee the same amount. This meant that a few got a raise, most stayed the same, and some, who had negotiated better at hiring, had their wages reduced. Needless to say most employees were unhappy. Two weeks later the three brothers who owned the business bought themselves two new cars and a second-hand Rolls Royce. That was a real slap in the face. The harder you work, the better a vacation your boss gets. They make a dollar I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. Guess where I'm posting this from? Go on, guess. In a very short span of time, they changed everyone's 401k plan, for worse, and then implemented an office-wide cleanliness policy. No eating at your desk. Only three personal items on your desk. Everything labeled. No items other than your keyboard, mouse, and monitors on your desk at the end of the day. Talk about pissed off. You could feel the gloom when you walked in. Everyone's give a shit or broke at once. Might have cleaned out the employees as well. My work just gave me a desk and they actively encourage decoration and personalization. It's ridiculous your work would ask you to limit the space that only you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Letting employees personalize their shiz is a free way to keep morale high. Nobody wants to feel like a drone in an endless maze of the same gray cubicles. Large factory, not unionized. Each department clocks in at a different place, mainly that department's break room. My department clocked in across the facility from the main entrance, which meant it took about 15 minutes to walk from the front door to where you clocked in and out at, and another 5 to walk from that entrance to the parking lot. There was a side exit that we would use, however, that literally cut that walk down from 20 minutes to 3, since our department was right next to the parking lot. Management decided that all employees must enter and exit through the same door. Which meant we had to walk all the way down to the main entrance and then back around to our cars. There was so much rebellion from the employees in our department that they had to bar the door shut with 2 by 4s Jokes on them, even unionized employees can be a pain in the ass. We contacted the fire marshal, who upon seeing a fire exit barricaded, find the company $8,000. We still were not allowed to enter through this door, but they stopped trying to stop us. 
Jesus, do you work at Auschwitz? Who barricades their own employees from exiting a door? Many years ago when I worked for everyone's favorite big box store, Walmart, they tried to tell us employees who worked in the automotive department that we all had to use the main front door to enter slash exit the building when going to work, leaving work, going out on break slash lunch, and returning from break slash lunch. The reason this was met with heavy opposition was because our department had a public door leading out into the automotive parking lot where we were all allowed to park, a certain distance away of course, in order to leave the closer spots for customers, which is fine. I argued that when I was coming in to start my shift, I wasn't currently clocked in on company time, and I'd use any goddamn public door I wanted. Same for break and lunch. That's my time, and I'll use whatever door I want. Everyone else did this as well, so nothing ever happened company just sucked it up and fucked off. It just blows my mind that this sort of shit happens at so many places. What's so hard about just being decent employers and treating people with a bit of dignity? To cut costs, they started a policy that only certain departments had internet access, it basically started a class system that bred resentment across departments, and caused an exodus from the non-internet teams. Ah, the internet. I have heard tales told of this precious and rare commodity. But if you ask me they're just legends made up to pass the time and fill the children with awe and wonder. My boss is looking to retire in the next 3 to 4 years. He told everyone that he wanted us to come up our visions for the company and its future over the next 5, 10, 20 years. We're a small office of about a half dozen people but we've been growing and so everyone brought up growth projections and succession planning once he retires, etc. His son is the heir apparent and has a precocious 8 year old so in my 20 year version I even included the grandson joining the business and grooming it to become a legacy company. My boss went last and we were expecting something acknowledging some of our thoughts or at least an expression of appreciation that the company he founded would live on well past his retirement, be in good hands, etc. Instead it was brutal and short. It was something along the lines of I do everything around here anyway so I should just sell the company to fund my retirement and you can all find other companies to work for in a few years. Mood killed. Meeting ended. Everyone quits that same year and he can start his retirement early. Yay. And the value of his company nose dives, everyone wins. In a company of 6 people, owner said in a meeting with everyone that his 2 sales guys are irreplaceable and that the rest of us are just paper pushers. He now runs a company of 3 people. Sales guys put maybe 20 minutes into one deal, then operations put stays into logistics, payment, paperwork, claims, etc. We also just purchased an office building for $1 million plus, so if we leave and sales can sell sell sell, this place will most definitely end up deep in bankruptcy. I'd hate to see that happen, but it's not the first time we've been informed that we're scum and just suck up company money while the sales guys are the ones making the profits. Try working in IT. That attitude is just the standard state of being. It's a job where if you work absolutely perfectly, you're totally invisible and only appear on the radar when something fucks up. Just a few weeks ago we did a major office move. My department worked back to back 12 to 18 hour days to get everything moved over, which we managed with less half a day's downtime, and we were moving the company's main data center. By the end of the final weekend after carrying 30 plus servers, plus cabs, up 4 stories, recabling 200 plus desks and literally moving trucks worth of gear I got home and my legs just wouldn't work anymore. I still have the blisters on my feet from walking about 30 miles in 2 days, and I was still at my desk at 7am the next day to run around the office fixing teething issues. Then, a few days ago the country chief got the whole office together to thank everyone for their hard work. He had a stack of envelopes with thank you card 50 pounds vouchers in them. Everyone who volunteered to help with the move got one including the people who volunteered to have an early snoop around the new office, spent 30 minutes on site and did precisely fuck all. You know who didn't get a mention, or an envelope? Anyone in IT. The people who were there working unpaid overtime until 2 AM for weeks. We were once in the middle of a very stressful period of work, and everyone was feeling it. However, one afternoon, an offhand comment turned into a conversation that we all got involved with and led to a few laughs. My manager, Returning from a meeting, piped up oh we've finished tomorrow's work, have we? What's all this about, insert subject matter. Entire team instantly deflated. Unnecessary. Every employee needs time to blow off a little steam. Shit like that kills me. I was an engineering intern at a factory owned by a German company, but located in the US South. It happened to be the summer of the World Cup and US Germany were playing on like a Thursday. The factory had engineers fabricators, and line workers. 
The engineers worked on long-term timelines, but the fabricators and the line workers had weekly quotas. In general the line outperformed quota, they were based on orders and the line could outpace the orders if needed. So normally the line reached the weekly quota by sometime late Thursday or early Friday. The engineering interns brought up that we wanted to watch part of the game during our launch break on the big projector in one of the conference rooms. The HR guy in charge of scheduling the room ran with the idea and ordered pizza for the entire factory to sit and watch the game. Thursday comes and the line is on pace to finish quota that afternoon, so had Friday to work extra slash cut off early. The whole factory staff shows up to watch the game, eat food, and relax for a bit. Morale is high as a bunch of East Tennessee folk are hooting and hollering over a soccer match of all things. Out of nowhere the plant manager strolls by and says I thought we were here to work. Room was empty in about 100 seconds. The interns were all pissed and hid in the warehouse watching the second half on one of our phones. Fuck that guy. Edit, it's not VW, BMW, or Mercedes. Some people have gotten close though. Edit 2, it's also not Bosch, but some people in the comments have gotten it correct. Former teacher. The administrators at my school were usually pretty chill, but had a habit of randomly coming up with minor rules that they would enforce for us, male teachers had to wear ties even on jeans day, etc. Overall it wasn't bad, except for the time an administrator made a crucial mistake. They banned staff from drinking coffee in front of students. Now if you've never worked in a school, you'd think this isn't a big deal. When you spend nearly 100% of your day in front of students, it definitely is a big deal. First we tried to find any loophole we could. Energy drinks? Banned the next week. Tea? Banned two days later. It was chaos. Eventually, we realized they couldn't fire an entire school's worth of teachers and aides, so we ended up doing the one thing that private schools fear most, we formed a union. Realistically, it was more of a weird pseudo-union focused specifically on civil disobedience regarding the coffee issue, but it ruffled feathers nonetheless. The administrators caved to our demands, allowed us to drink coffee again, and even bought each of us a reusable coffee mug as a gesture of goodwill. And that's the story of how a handful of school administrators almost accidentally created a teachers union over a complete non-issue. Removed COLA raises each year for all employees and implemented a raise when promoted or take on more responsibility model. However promotions are very rare and raises are never approved. So everyone is losing money to inflation each year and they tried to sell it as a big win for the employees. We aren't stupid people. And companies wonder why employees leave after three years. No one knows. It's a mystery. I think it would be funny to hand in your two week notice alongside with resume and cover letter for exactly the same position. With perks written in, three year experience in this exact position. Only request readjusted salary on the interview. Oh, and if asked why you left your previous job, my employer refused to adjust salary for inflation. I put in my two weeks notice at my workplace today. I asked for a raise and got told I couldn't be given one because I wasn't being given a promotion and it wasn't time for my yearly review yet. What you discussed is exactly what I'm considering doing. Employer, why did you apply here? Didn't you quit last week? Me, yeah, it was a shame the store policy kept you from giving me a raise. Employer, right. So how much are you wanting? Me, my old wage plus a reasonable and fair raise. Casually said the best employee was X and everyone, including X, knew that X was among those who did the least amount of work. Edit, X was the most friendly to the boss, always coming in to say hi, do you need anything? At least X is self-aware I guess. Yeah he was laughing slightly as all our eyes widened in shock fired the girl who was in her third trimester of pregnancy three days before her maternity leave was to start. My wife was let go after she announced her pregnancy to her manager, and approximately when she would need maternity leave. She was told that they'd rather replace her than deal with a pregnant employee and all that goes with that. A well-worded letter from our attorney got her one year's severance, and two years medical coverage for her and the baby. Held a super positive, pep rally style company wide meeting about how they were going to start combining our sick days with our vacation days and now just call them PTO this was presented to us as a great thing, since we could all now use our PTO days fully as vacation days if we wanted to. Once the system was implemented, everyone realized that instead of getting 10 vacation days and 10 sick days per year, we now all had 15 PTO days. Everyone was pissed. Edit. I just want to say that anyone bragging in the replies about how this wouldn't affect them because they don't use their sick days has ducked up priorities. Welcome to the new norm. My wife's company does this and it's ducking awful. 
My company does this and I hate it. Trying to save up PTO for my honeymoon but I've been sick just twice and since they won't let me take a non-paid day, I now don't have enough PTO. Head of department realized that we weren't about to meet our targets for the financial year. Completely banned annual leave for three months, forced anyone who didn't fill in their timesheet on time to attend disciplinary meeting, despite problems with the system meaning that some didn't get filled in, and generally had lower management terrified, causing a massive blame culture and several people to be signed off with mental health issues. In the end, the employee survey which went to his bosses was hilariously bad, and he's now somewhere else making some other people's lives a misery. The best part was when his replacement came in and fired his right-hand man who was also a dick. All companies need employee surveys for this reason. Even if corporate doesn't read it, it's great fun to watch managers kiss ass for a week knowing their review is approaching. My company had an, anonymous, employee suvi this past year and when the results, which reflected negatively on the GM slash manager, were revealed, everyone had to sit through a 4-hour meeting where, line by line, our GM asked why do 50% of you feel this way or 60% of you not like this. No one really spoke up, it was supposed to be anonymous, so we just got told how if we felt that way, this is why our feelings were wrong. By the end of the 4 hours most of us were like was that supposed to deter us from rating negatively next year. So we don't have to sit through a 4 hour meeting about how we're not right in feeling the way we did. This is ducking poor self reflection and poor management skills. Turns out that cutthroat assholes who stab their way to the top aren't exactly the best leaders. It was a one-two punch. The company-wide meeting announced the promotion of several high-level management and executives, mostly title and responsibility changes. Lots of smiles and handshakes, not unlike a college graduation ceremony. After these promotion announcements, they declared that due to the stagnant economy and poor sales, the entire company would be experiencing a pay freeze as a result. So, no raises for anyone. They then concluded the meeting by discontinuing casual Fridays. So, no more jeans on Friday. It almost felt like it was designed to make people want to quit and leave. It worked though, I and many others moved on to greener pastures within the year. Edit, to answer some of the questions posed, but without sharing too much personal information, this was a mid-sized manufacturing firm in the US around 2010. I moved on to what was the most lucrative job I have ever had as a result of this, so I don't hold any resentment, I just remember it utterly destroyed employee morale that day. If it was the ownership slash management's plan to get people to quit, it was pretty stupid, as only the mobile and capable talent moved on, while those incapable of finding another job or the lifers, who would probably stay on even if the company announced they planned to cut the oxygen supply to the building by 50% to save money, stayed on through it. I can understand the need for promotion to fill positions from vacancies, etc. I can understand the need to have a pay freeze, beats, layoffs right? But doing the prior two right after each other and then saying, yeah, and no more casual Fridays just seemed really vindictive and malicious. If anything, they should have softened the blow of the pay freeze by saying casual Friday is now every day, and people would have left them eating at least neutral if not slightly hopeful. That's probably what they wanted. Yep. Can't claim unemployment if you quit. That's why you just disregard the no casual Fridays anymore policy until they fire you. Call their bluff. I think my job would be a lot more fun if I was actively trying to get fired. They banned phones, electronics, puzzles, books, etc. from being used at your desk. I work at a call center. We were expected to just sit and wait for the next call to come in distraction free, even if it was a super slow day. They banned phones at my work contact center, and any device with a camera as I work in government with public info. I now set up a Nintendo Switch and rock Mario Kart or Zelda between calls as there is no camera, no way to connect to a browser and no voice recording. I'd call it a bit of malicious compliance in a way. Told a bunch of people they were going to be promoted to get us to do extra work, no one got promoted. I basically did her job for a month. Me and three of my co-workers quit and she got fired a few months later. My job has been doing that to people including me. They pass people over for promotions then say but if you do all this extra stuff it'll look good for the next one. Meanwhile managers promote their friends basically. Had a boss everyone loved, then she got transferred to another store and the new guy that replaced her decided the schedule that we'd all gotten used to needed to be shaken up. He posted the next week's schedule that was completely different than it had been under the previous manager, got a bunch of complaints from people saying they can't work X days or Y times and it seemed he was receptive since he took that schedule down. Then suddenly BAM! 
he just reposted the same exact schedule and said fuck everyone. Oh, we had some people calling in sick from time to time under the old manager, but this new manager has pretty much half his crew every single day calling out because of his shitty tactics. Here's the first thing to learn about being a good manager, you don't need to shake things up for people to be better workers. You don't need to put your mark on anything if it's working just fine the way it was. A grocery store I worked at for just about 4 weeks or so in 2000 did that. The manager, who primarily employed high school seniors like myself, would state your employer is your number one priority. You work for them, not the other way around. I don't care about whatever teenager slash high school things you have going on. If you can't work the shifts I want you to, I don't want you to work for me. Only job I straight up walked out on after he told me I couldn't get off for my own graduation. That's the best. I love it when employers try to be shitty to high school students. They never realize that high school students don't need them at all. They still live with their parents and most of the time don't have any bills to pay, maybe just a car payment and going out to eat if you're unlucky. Plus just about anyone will hire a high school student since they're usually willing to work for next to nothing. Changed up the metrics that determine people's bonuses and included things that were important for the business to know, but completely beyond the control of the people whose bonuses were impacted. For example, we had a right party contact trait, how many times you actually got the person you were calling versus the number of calls you actually made. The problem was the phone number list came from elsewhere, and the people making the calls were just given a list of numbers, and you had to call them all. No leeway. So you're calling blind from a list you don't control, and get penalized if the list is shit. Oddly enough, the people in charge of making the phone number lists, their bonuses were not influenced by a right party contact trait. Was working for EB Games when GameStop bought them. 20% of any warranty, and $1 for every subscription sold went into your paycheck as commission. And you'd never feel dirty selling the things, because Edge Magazine, EB's answer to Game Informer, and their extended warranties were legit, and fairly priced. GameStop buys the company. First thing they do? Nix the commissions. You still have to sell the stuff, of course. I'll never forget the first meeting I had with GameStop as a manager. They really drilled how profitable those things are to the company. Soon after came the threats of reduced hours if you didn't hit quotas, mandated by corporate. Yeah. Duck GameStop. Edit, and my top post of all time is me saying Duck GameStop. I am amused. I was one of a large number of programmers working on a project at CSC. We had a deadline coming up in a couple months and they over promised to the client and then asked us all to work extra hard to meet the deadline, and asked us to work 50 plus hour weeks. Which we did, and then some, some of us put in 70 to 80 hour weeks to meet this deadline. But once that deadline was met, suddenly there was another deadline they needed to meet. And another. People got tired, had lives to lead, and scaled back on their hours. Most of us were still working 50 to 60 hours a week, but not a lot more than that. Once they realized we weren't killing ourselves on their project any longer, there was an all-hands meeting where the managers told us that they were incredibly disappointed in our lack of professionalism because so comparatively few employees were now working more than 50 hours a week. One of our harder workers stood up and said, Look, I have three kids. I'm driving an hour into and out of work every day, I'm taking care of my family, I'm trying to get presents for Christmas, write out Christmas cards, decorate and clean the house for everyone we're having over for the holidays, I'm having a really hard time just getting to 50. And the manager looked at her and sneered, if it wasn't Christmas, it'd be because it's Easter, or Memorial Day, or because it's summer and it's nice out. You'd always have some excuse. There was dead silence in the room. When we left that meeting, we didn't talk to each other, but every single worker on that project put in exactly 50 hours a week after that. Then came Christmas, raise and bonus time. Every worker on the project got a half percent raise, the managers got a five-figure bonus. We were pissed. For management, the pain came after Christmas. First week off the year, four programmers had better jobs lined up and quit. Three more the following week. Five the next. We hemorrhaged three to five programmers every single week for over three months. It got to the point where the managers had to schedule a meeting every Monday at 11 to discuss that week's resignations and rearrange the surviving staff. Fuck CSC. Started firing people by lining two up at a time and seeing which one they prefer to keep on. Didn't matter if you were there for 20 years or two. Also hiring management from outside and not promoting within which means the new managers have no knowledge of anything that company does in terms of ethics, procedures, or employee status. 
It has turned this clique type environment into every person for themselves. Very toxic. Thanos the day manager. They got rid of their night cleaning crew the week after I started and we had to learn how to clean the whole department on our own before close. I work in a meat department so this meant taking a part in cleaning two meat grinders and a bandsaw that were covered with meat goop. Almost the whole department quit because of this, but I stuck around and got the hang of it. After about three months though they hired the cleaning crew back. Now closing is a breeze. Edit, yes I'm aware most meat departments don't have a cleaning crew. Duck man, I worked in a butcher shop in college, and cleaning those meat grinders is no joke. The grinder itself is a 2 feet long corkscrew that has to weigh 25 pounds oh, and it's razor sharp and covered in soapy water and beef tallow. Me personally, I'm a security guard at a library. My boss said she wanted me moving around a lot, which is cool. I would get up every 15 minutes, patrol the entire building, then sit back down for another 15 minutes. It's not the busiest place so it seems to work out fine, especially since my co-workers always know how to get a hold of me. However, Apparently a co-worker told my supervisor I was slacking off, and this co-worker's known for micromanaging people she has no control over, and wasn't doing my job properly. But instead of talking to me about it, my boss just says, oh I meant constantly. Constantly walking, 4 to 8 hours straight, no sitting down at all. Also we fired the only other security guard so you gotta take his shifts too. So other than a legally obliged 15 minute break, I'm supposed to be hiking all day long and assert my presence to the dozen or so patrons we have. I'm turning in my two week notice on Wednesday, and in the meantime I just take very long bathroom breaks. Firing half the staff for no reason other than to clean house when new management caused the other half to leave as well. You wouldn't think it possible for a hotel to go out of business in less than two months but lo and behold it did just that. Edit, holy shit my highest rated comment by far in all in less than four hours? Damn I wish karma was tangible ha ha ha. Edit 2, people are asking for more details so I'm pasting this comment to a user I replied to further down. New general manager came in, fired all the best people, I was really good but had only been there for 3 years so I wasn't making a lot, because they were making too much money and replaced them with base pay workers who didn't give a shit. Then that increased the workload on everyone else that wasn't fired so they all quit. Then the hotel was stuck with half a shitty staff. Funny thing is that we made in the ballpark of 20 million dollars the year before my original GM left and the year the new GM took over I heard from one of the few people that still worked there, there were two originals out of a 60 person staff, that they were projected to barely clear 2 mil. We were in the top 5 Hiltons in the entire Midwest for years and there were only a handful of nights like Christmas when we wouldn't sell all 140 rooms. Why that dumb shit tried to change everything when the place ran itself and was kicking serious ass I will never know, but he's out of a job now. My old GM would literally leave halfway through the day if he wanted, rarely, because our managers were so good and everyone actually cared about the place. I used to work at an English immersion middle school in Korea. The admin was all Korean, including my boss, the vice principal. Word started going around that the school was under investigation for certain admin taking bribes to admit students. The VP got visibly anxious for a few weeks. Then one Sunday night we got a text message from one of the Korean teachers at the school. The vice principal has passed away. It turns out he had hung himself in the school lobby that afternoon. The teaching staff still had to be at school the next morning even though classes were cancelled for several days. I remember walking into the school and seeing a custodian mopping the spot where the VP had been hanging. Morale tanked pretty hard for a while. I worked at a restaurant with a shit tipped minimum $2.63 an hour. We'd be penalized for being even 5 minutes late so lots of us showed up 20 to 30 minutes early to make sure we'd avoid the penalty, this is Boston, so that was an appropriate gamble, I've gotten stuck on the tee for 10 to 20 minutes on numerous occasions, and we'd just get right to work and there's plenty to do when opening a big restaurant. So we'd clock in and start working no one was clocking in and failing to work. In fact I liked getting there early because the kitchen would get up to 113, most of the morning prep occurred in the kitchen and was fairly rigorous, we didn't really air condition and had to wear long sleeve shirts and pants. So I could knock everything out in a tank and shorts, change into my uniform, and not start my shift a sweaty mess. The manager gave us a big lecture about how it adds up, even if it is only $2.63 an hour. She made a new rule that we couldn't clock in more than 10 minutes before our shift began, even if we were working. By the way, that's a 15 minute window of appropriate clocking and time, in Boston, with a notoriously unreliably public transportation system, crazy weather, and over clogged roads. Duck Rafton Street and Duck U, 
Ashley. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and comment below letting me know. It helps the channel and lets me create more content just like this. If you do like this type of content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload.